Welcome. My dear daughter, how are you? Fine, thank you. Today, we're gonna talk about Mustafa Kemal and we'll have this conversation in English so that the whole world can understand and learn him. Let's start with a question. Why do Turks love Mustafa Kemal so much, even after a century? He lived about a century ago and died on the 10th of November in 1938. And here are some new photos from the 10th of November 2019. On his death time at 5 past 9 o'clock, drivers stop the traffic, get out of their cars and stand in silence for a minute, just like the other Turks on the streets. More than a million people visit Anadkabir, Atatürk's museum in Turkey's capital Ankara, all day long. Why? Do Turks have something wrong with their minds? Isn't this man died about a century ago? What is the origin of this unending love? Or is it something like a fate? Such an eternal commitment as if he is a prophet or a wise person who initiated a new religion. And it doesn't diminish. On the contrary, this great love grows more and more with each new generation. Here comes a full explanation from my daughter. Please stay tuned and learn. Also be a subscriber to our channel, like and comment this video. Yes, father, the Turks, me, you, my sisters, my family, everybody I know still love Mustafa Kemal very much. First of all, he was very handsome. Very. 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 Very handsome. But sure, that's not the point. He was gorgeous. Every time well dressed and was a great example to his retinue and his people. He was extremely elegant in all circumstances. But once again, this is not the point. He was a war hero. In 1915, he stopped the British forces in front of the Dardanelles. At a critical moment of the battle, he had said this to his soldiers. I am not ordering you to attack. I command you to die. Other forces and other commanders can take our place until the time we die. If you don't have ammunition, you have bayonets. Fix bayonets. Lie down. And without any hesitation, all the soldiers carried out his command. Twenty years after the war, as the president of Turkey, he could break and celebrate the victory of Dardanelles battle with ceremonies. But instead, he said this. Those heroes that shed their blood and lost their lives, you are now lying in the soil of a friendly country. Therefore, rest in peace. There is no difference between the Johnnies and the Mehmets to us where they lie side by side here in the country of ours. You, the mothers who sent their sons from faraway countries, wipe away your tears. Your sons are now living in our bosom and are in peace. Having lost their lives on this land, they have become our sons as well. A few years after the Battle of Gallipoli, he had to make a final war. He acted very quickly when his country was occupied. He organized his nation, led the national movement, started the Turkish War of Independence and saved his country from enemies. He was a war hero, a military genius, then became a savior and afterwards a state founder. Now let's ask a few questions to understand the magnitude of his revolutions. Were the British able to abolish the kingdom? No, neither they nor the other nine countries in Europe, such as Holland, Spain, Belgium, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, unbelievable, in the 21st century. But Turkey, Mustafa Kemal, abolished the Sultanate in 1922, right after the victory. Not only that, he also abolished the Caliphate in 1924. Think of abolishing Papazi, the Vatican. <laughs> it's art, isn't it? You may not even have thought so far. 
Sohbat Mustafa Kemal did this. He got the Quran be translated into Turkish, just like Martin Luther once did for the Bible, freed his people from despotism and bigotry at the same time, and built a democratic, secular country. He taught his people freedom and independence. Independence was one of his most important principles. He made the theory of it, formulated its components. Freedom and independence are my characteristics, he said. I must stay as a son of independent nation to survive. Only the tenacity and determination of the nation will save the independence of the country. On the 29th of October 1923, the Republic of Turkey was proclaimed and afterwards political, economic and social reforms started to be implemented. They were one of the largest series of revolutions in the history of the world. Some of them are these. The Shire courts were closed and the civil code was adopted from Switzerland. Islamic calendar was replaced by the Gregorian calendar. Weekend holiday was set to Sunday instead of Friday. International measurement system was adopted and units such as kilograms and meters were accepted. Everybody got a surname for the first time. These revolutions and the acceptance of modern customs, such as wearing cats and getting rid of cheddars, were among the most concrete st steps of westernization. Before these revolutions, women were veiling their faces and eyes. One of the most heartbreaking traditions for Mustafa Kemal was women turning their backs and crouching on the floor when a man passed by. He led the world's first alphabet reform and the Arabic letters were replaced with the Latin letters. The prayers and the azan were translated into Turkish. The bylaw dictating that the religion of the Turkish state is Islam was replaced by the principle of secularism. Islamic monasteries and madrasas were closed. The education was unified and the university reform was done. Mustafa Kemal explained these revolutions as follows. Dear gentlemen and beloved nation, it should be well known that the Republic of Turkey cannot be a nation of sheikhs, dervis, disciples or drenched people. The most accurate and the most genuine cult is the cult of civilization. He established institutions that research Turkish history and Anatolian civilizations and an institution for simplifying the Turkish language. He was so dedicated to this that he wrote a geometry book and found the Turkish equivalents of the terms still used. But he made his most important revolutions in terms of improving the rights and freedoms of women. Islam allowed polygamy. Men could divorce their wives at any time. In inheritance law, girls could get half of the share of boys. A man's testimony in court was equal to the testimony of two women. Women had no opportunity for education. They were leading a closed life behind the cage. With the series of reforms between 1926 and 1934, these all have changed. Turkish women obtained their civil and political rights and their social role was increased. For example, Turkish women gained the right to elect and be elected 11 years before France and Italy, 12 from Romania, 13 from Bulgaria, 14 from Belgium and 36 years from Switzerland, where the civil code was taken. Turkey was ranked second in the world by the ratio of the number of women in parliament in 1935. Mustafa Kemal developed Turkey on Western civilization and aimed to live free and independent as a part of modern world. He is even criticized for this reason that he broke away from his own culture and traditions. However, as an active revolutionary of enlightenment, he aimed only to bring the outdated institutions and ideas behind the age to more civilized norms. World history doesn't forget a person who does one of his achievements, but historiographers failed to raise this great military, political and social revolutionary genius to the value he deserves, which had accomplished all of his job in as little as 20 years.
as you see, is the one for the Turks. And for a better understanding for matrix lovers, he sure is the real life Neo. Mustafa Kemal is the light of Renaissance and enlightenment for Islamic world. But again, despite all this, why? Okay, he's a great guy. He has done magnificent jobs. But why? After all a century. Why do Turks still consider him a political figure? And how does he still seem stronger than his rivals? Yes, that's the current question. And here is why. Turkey has lost a lot after his death. The Republic is under attack. Turkey is under threat. Majority is far away from his idols. So said, but Turkey doesn't seem to be Mustafa Kemal's country anymore. But here in Turkey, there are still those who resist. We are pretty sure that his ideals are invincible and Mustafa Kemal's victory will come again. Though sometimes we may lose a few steps back, it's certain that in the end, enlightenment and renaissance always win. We are the soldiers of Mustafa Kemal. And we are the citizens of Mustafa Kemal's nation. People all over the world, come and join this worldwide nation. And the last word for the ones who are against Mustafa Kemal. Hey, preacher, leave us folks alone. Like, comment, be a subscriber and stay tuned. See you. Bye.